All right, so the main event was Chris Jericho and Bandito for the ROH title. This match was great. This Bandito, at Bandito's- one point early, he lifts Jericho up for a vertical suplex, and he held Chris Jericho upside down. I got out my stopwatch. 57 seconds. Wow. And when he finally dropped that guy, this place just went crazy. And from that point, it was on. And I mean, you know, Jericho's in there, and he's 51 years old, and man, he's taking everything. He took the uh, he took, moonsault uh, press. He, he, he took he took everything to get that guy over. The moonsault fallaway slam. He took a hurricane runner off the apron to the floor. That was crazy. I, I was surprised he took that one. It's just all of this crazy stuff, and the people are going crazy for this. All match. the all the all the dives. Um, the twenty one plex. Yep. Took everything. Yeah. He took every move in this match. Yeah, and everything that every 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 you know every trademark bandito move. He took every one of them. He he did. Um, I mean, you could tell his. You know, he was going to win the match. So his deal was is that he's going to make Bandito look as good as possible because he's going to win the match in the end. And um, you know, it was. Uh, and I will say, like to their credit, I mean, with both this match and the Moxley match. Like, you, you put these matches on paper Wednesday morning, and it's like nobody thinks that Bandito's beaten Jericho, and nobody thinks that Juice Robinson has beaten Moxley. But, man, in this match, when they do those near falls at the end and Bandito hit that 21-plex, I mean, that crowd bought it. And yeah. Jericho kicked out at the last second, and then he pulled Bandito's mask down over his face, went for the walls, got countered with a small package, uh, put the walls on a second time, and the story was that if Bandito knew where the ropes were, he might have got to them. But because he couldn't see, he had no idea where he was, and he just he just was forced to tap. And so Jericho retains the title uh, via underhanded, dishonorable tactics to retain the Ring of Honor, Honor title. And uh, he demands Bobby Cruz get in the ring. And he says, I am here to desecrate the legacy of Ring of Honor. I'm going to beat all of the former Ring of Honor champions, including Brian Danielson, October 12th in Toronto. And he says, I'm going to beat every former champion, commentator, referee, and ring announcer. And he punches Bobby Cruz in the stomach. He gives him the Judas effect. Fans are booing him as he goes off the air. This is the easiest, simplest storyline Heal Chris Jericho, the Ring of Dishonor champion, but it's it's <laughs> the, these the, guys like I was just Ocho. watching this match and thinking, my God, they've resurrected a Ring of Honor in this match right here. Like this felt so hot from start to finish. Well, not right away, but pretty quick because um, you know, I, the, you know, it wasn't like again like compared to if it was a year ago. You know, I remember when Bandito comes out, it's like a year ago, that kind of a guy would have gotten a giant reaction from the live crowd. And this one, really not so much. But, you know, like the work that they did. Yeah, yeah but you know like what? You could almost end. argue that the reason that something like that has occurred is because they've they've grown their audience to a degree that you have more fans. No, but but this is the smallest crowd they've ever had in Philadelphia. I'm not That's talking the, I'm not talking this particular crowd. I'm saying I, I am. I'm talking this particular crowd. I know, but crowd. I'm saying when and, this and company Phil, first started, okay? Yes. When this company first started, everybody that was an AEW fan would have known Bandito. Absolutely. I believe that they have grown over the last 3 years, so they now have a portion of the audience that doesn't know everything about Bandito, and thus he's going to get a different reaction coming out than he would have gotten three years ago. But the live attendances are are not up. If that was the case, that would be wonderful. If you went, if you were going from from four thousand people who all knew Bandito to ten thousand people and six thousand didn't know Bandito, that's wonderful in its growth. But Philadelphia went from nine thousand people who would have all known Bandito to five thousand. Well, people. Well, that's a totally different issue. Who, who, most of them who didn't know what it is, is, is that whatever it was that, that cool thing that they had at the beginning, um, you know, and, and being special and this and that, you know, they, they're back, they're now, um, they're now the number two promotion in the country, but they're drawing like a lot of WWE fans, 
um, or W, or, or I shouldn't say I don't necessarily say WWE fans, but fans like WWE. It's not their unique audience that's really into everything. In some cities, it's been. I mean, really, it's only been a couple cities. Like Albany was like this, Philadelphia was like this, but Philadelphia was a big surprise. Albany wasn't a surprise at all. Um, and and again, it's the exception, not the rule, because most most nights they are very very hot. But um, you know, again, if they were in Philadelphia one year ago um, with this same thing, the people would have gone nuts for Juice, and they would have gone nuts for Bandito. And this crowd, um, they didn't go nuts for Juice at all. And with Bandito, they did, you know, because of the work of the match, but not when he came out. It's it's a different it's just a different thing right now. Um, or it was it was this night, but um, I thought I I hope. I hope to God that Bandito is under contract because if not, this guy should be getting an offer from WWE and from AEW from this performance um, immediately because this was a, he can be, this guy can be a star. You know, he's like Takeshita. Dude, this guy was a huge star by the time the show was over. Yeah, he's like Takeshita. You know, these guys... These guys can be the future. And Bandito even more. Because one thing with Bandito is is that the Mexican-American population continues to grow in this country. And everyone knows it. And everyone knows that you need, you don't need, but it'd be very, very beneficial to have a young, um, you know, charismatic guy, Mexican star who can go. You know, like a next generation Rey Mysterio. And... Um, you know, Pentagon kind of had that charisma, but it just, you know, he's been there too long to be that guy. Andrade, um, I mean, he's just not clicked at that level at all. Uh, Phoenix is fantastic, um, but he's, there's something missing there um, as far as being a top guy. I mean, he's, Phoenix is the greatest guy to put in there with top guys because he'll lose and the top guys look great and he looks great and you get a great match. But, you know, he's not, you know, he's not going to be a world champion. Um, but I think Bandito has got more enough charisma and he's young enough that he can be their guy. And with WWE, you know, again, with WWE, I don't know where Paul Levesque, I mean, everyone, everyone wants that next Mexican star. Everyone wants it. Everyone wants the new Ray, but they've never been able to, they've no, no one's been able to replace Ray. And they sure tried with Alberto. And they tried so hard and it didn't it didn't work because Alberto's tall and good looking, but you know, tall and good looking is not it. Um Bandito's not particularly tall, but he's got a good body. And there was a lot of stuff that they did on this in this match also that um like this match it was not for like we, they we, they probably had like seven minutes of commercial breaks in this match, which hurt the flow and everything like this. But they did not slow down during those commercial breaks and like some of the best stuff, including a one armed press slam on Jericho, um, did not air on I mean it aired in the commercial break, so the effect of it in the United States wasn't big. If you're watching on fight, of course you saw it. And then there was another spot where they're on their knees going back and forth and I could look at the crowd and see the crowd going nuts, but there is no sound, you don't hear the chops. You know, it's great to throw these great, great looking chops on your knees, but when you can't hear them, the effect is not as big as it would be. So that was, you know, that timing kind of hurt when you're doing, you know, when you're doing some of your best stuff during the break because there's so much break time and they're not slowing and they're not going to, and they're not slowing down. But, um, yeah, Bandito, um, he, somebody needs to sign him right away because he can be that guy i don't know if wwe would le ever let him be that guy but every time again i've seen bandito you know many many times uh live many times and any place that gives him a chance to get over he will get over big because the other thing about him is is that he's got that likability thing going you know when he does the dance and the 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 music and then just you know, just all the cool moves. And the other thing is he's not a big guy, but he's a very strong guy. And people go crazy at a lighter guy doing press slams, which he can do. I mean, like one-arm press slam. He tried to do that, that suplex for, for, for 57 seconds. 
and probably what 25 of those seconds it was one armed suplex and he, he kind of started to lose him so he had to use the second arm but he was out there suplexing the guy with one arm and um balancing him and you know jericho's a much bigger guy than he is so it, it's that kind of stuff like he would do that with really big guys um like i've seen him work with like cobb and um people like that where it's really impressive what he can do hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today you get access to every single one of them the 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week you can podcast them listen to them on the road at work working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts, and also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com, 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.